Hi everybody, welcome to Unit 2 of uh, Statistics. Today we're going to be talking about data structures. Uh, from now on my videos are going to be slightly longer because there's a lot of concepts that need to be very clear. Remember, uh, in statistics or in math in general, this is like snowball. If there's something missing, you miss it on the next stage and next stage and then by the time we reach unit number 10, you're going to be completely lost and uh, there's no way I can get you out of that okay so anyways so let's go first to the data structure so mm, let's go here to data structures let me move this to the bottom so we have the data structure so we need to understand that uh, in business or in generally we generate a lot of data but we need to give it a structure so in this case when we structure it we will put it in rows we will put it in columns let me put my cursor right? when we put it in rows right and we set columns that was even worse right anyways imagine that is a column and those are rows right we need to structure we start to structure the data so we start to analyze it we start to put it in what the data is similar what data is different what in categories are we gonna give it so that is a data set okay so now let's go to the following image and here let's look at it so this is a data structure so data that is already structured so in this case we decided okay so we have a lot of information about what we have companies actually we could even label it more clearly as restaurants and that could be right it's not just general companies but anyways in this case they we decided to label it as companies and we decided to label the profits okay so what we have all around here we call it a data set we're gonna call it information we'll not call it just numbers we're gonna call it names or cells no we're gonna call it a data set okay so in this case we have the elementary units what are the elementary units as I mentioned before we're not gonna call it rows we're gonna call it elementary units so how many elementary units we have in here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten elementary units okay and then of course we have the variable how many variables we have we have one okay be careful because you're gonna say so no we we have ten variables no we have only one variable we're talking about one variable because we're talking into this direction okay in this direction we can count them elementary units 10 variable only one okay so that we have it and we need to understand that very clearly because we're gonna pass to something a bit more complex okay so very good so now let's go to variables we're gonna be talking about variables so in this how many variables I have so uh, in this case uh, a piece of information recorded for every item is a variable so first of all let's look at the let's look at univariate okay so we have a univariate data let me remove myself univariate data Woo, that was a nice move right anyways we have a univariate data as I mentioned before we have only one okay so this is a univariate data was only one piece of one piece of information recorded for each item and so in this case what we'll be looking in univariate data we're going to be looking at what is the typical or the summary value so in this case i can say what is the average of all these numbers what is the max What is the minimum? Etc. Right? So those are just the summary values. And we're gonna be talking about summary values in unit number four. Pay attention to that. But anyways, now right now we're just talking about univariate data. So we're gonna be talking at how diverse are these items. We're gonna look at them individually. So we're gonna say, well, this one differs a little bit too much from the minimum. There's a huge gap between them. That means this 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 uh these profits are not uh, not really very linked in terms of the quantity right okay and we're gonna look whether there's any individuals or group that require special attention so we can see for example here we have 
a more common group and we have the middle ones and then we have let me erase that for you we have some smaller groups we have more like a middle ones and then perhaps we have the higher group right so one two three groups i'm just generalizing please don't don't take it as a full example okay so anyways that is a univariate data okay very good so now let's let's go back to v variate data so in v variate data we're gonna have two groups or two columns if we're gonna can use normal language have two of them okay but in here things start to get complicated because we're gonna be looking whether there's any relationship between this group and this group what kind of relationship are we looking for casual casual relationship no we're gonna be looking that for example for every time that this number increases does this increase to or this one decreases so there's a direct relation, right? Means they're they're directly correlated because it grows or decreases or nothing. It not nothing happens, right? So we have to check that, right? So we have to check that first. We have to check second how strongly they are related, right? We see evidence of every time this one for let's let's just look at one example so this one is 91 and then this one we have a 16 percent right and then we have if it increases to 445 it goes 22 so that means every time that this one increases there's an increase in this one let's look at that if it's a rule or not in this one we have for example 132 and 25 so that means that rule is not applicable. That means that correlation or that, that relation is not that strong. It's not evident. Or it, actually there isn't there, there isn't a prediction that we can do from this number to this number. Anyways, we will be looking at that in unit number nine or around no, nine or ten, I can't remember exactly. But anyways, we're gonna be looking at coefficients and this those coefficients are gonna be telling us how strongly they are, right? In the end, we have to, if we get a correlation of positive 1, that means they are very well connected. And if not, if uh, the closer is to 0, or the closer is to minus, minus 1, then that means it's not correlated. But don't worry about this one, this, I'm just confusing you now. <laughs> just think about how strongly they are. Are they parents? Are they cousins? Are they brothers? Or are they partners in love? We have to figure that out. How simple as that. That's the variate date. Okay, so now let's go to multivariate date. So we have multivariate data. As you can see in here, here gets way more complex because we have one, two, three, four variables. So in this case, are we looking whether there's a relationship with them as well? In this case, we have a multiple regression analysis. That's a mathematical method that we use to check the connection between of them. Multiple regression analysis. We're going to look at that later. This multiple regression analysis we will tell us whether, firstly, how much is the connection between, like, let's say, for example, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. That's what the multiple regression analysis do. And then it tells us where 2 is connected to 3, to 4, and to 1, and so on. 3, to 4, to 1, to 2. And then after that, the calculation, the mathematical calculation, tells us with a number or a coefficient, all of those how are connected. It will throw us a very simple number. Anyways, don't worry about that. The important thing is that when we have multivariate data and we use a multiple regression analysis, we will look at the connections of all those ones and then ultimately it's going to tell us which one is the strongest. Maybe one is the strongest one or three is the strongest one or which one is the strongest one or none of them is strong at all. Okay, so in this case, it also is going to tell us whether we can predict any changes if, let's say, for example, if we 
this one is the most influential so if we increase this by one all of these ones will increase by three no so pretty much that's what we do with we do in multivariate data okay anyway let's go back let's go back sorry let's go back to oh, now we finished already now let's go to quantitative data okay so we were looking at for example at the the numbers in here and this is quantitative data okay this is quantitative data why because we have numbers in there Go back. Oh, I got confused in my own slides. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure many of you also get confused with your own slides and uh, with my own slides. Anyways, we go to quantitative data. So in this case, we have discrete and continuous. Okay, so we have here. Uh, let's look at the, uh, at the overall because this is going to be very useful. We have date. So we have two types of data, which is qualitative and quantitative. Later we will go to qualitative. Qualitative it means the qualities of some things. In this case, it was great fun. It was red. It was big. All of those are qualities. Handsome, like your professor, those are qualities. Okay, and then we're talking about the other one, which is quantity. So that's why we call it quantitative. Okay, so in this case, we're looking at numbers. And then we have very simple discrete. We can count them. It's not a measurement. It is just full numbers. Remember, you cannot break them. It's just five, five humans. So I cannot say 4.5 humans. No, why? What? What's a half human? That That's not possible, right? So and then the other one we use a scale so in this case we use a scale and then we can break it into smaller and we can always break it break it break it right in this one we cannot break it discrete we cannot break it continuous we can break it it's as simple as that okay anyways if you want to go into that one if you want to go into those examples and you can see the two of them but I explain it very clearly there I think if you have still more questions about it you can watch this video and this video is very very well explained very easily graphically you can see it there okay now here we have something that we have to note that is when we're using quantitative data numbers we have to make sure that they have any meaning it can be for example when we're talking about the barcodes of a product, the barcode doesn't mean that this number, because this number is bigger than the other one, then it has a higher quantity. No, let's say, for example, Coca-Cola has a barcode of one and Pepsi has a barcode of two. That doesn't mean that Coca-Cola is better than Pepsi. It has no meaning. So we have to make sure that we look for numbers with a certain meaning. Okay, very good. Now, now let's look for qualitative qualitative data. So when we go to qualitative data, that's another story. In this case, when we're talking about qualitative data, we're talking about the qualities. So in this case, for example, we have two types of them. So in this case, we're most of the time we're talking about words right descriptions so in this case we can say for example they are where they are, they are ordinal they have a certain order or nominal they have no meaningful order so in this case for example we're talking about ordinal and i can say for example gold silver Bronze. Horrible, right? Anyways, this is one, two, three. That's already now. Although they are words, they have a certain meaningful order. 
right? So in this case, a, uh, we have to look for that qualitative orders and we have to put them in order. Or in the other case, we have nomina, which is there is no meaningful order. In this case, we can just say, for example, it's red, it's blue, it's purple. Which one color is better? There's no meaning to that. So we'll just put it there. Okay. So in this case, for example, when we talk about nominal, what if we have, for example, the the the, no, the names the names of the restaurants, McDonald's, Starbucks, etc. In the previous example, we don't have any meaningful order. They make an order because of the quantitative data, but not because the name is better or not. So in this case, there's no there's no meaning to that, right? Why McDonald's was above? It was because of the quantitative data, but not because of the qualitative data that we inserted in there. So we don't need to measure that. Okay. So now let's go to time series versus cross-sectional. So in this case, when we are talking about time series, we're talking about data Time series is data that we measure over time on continuous periods of time. So let's say every Monday I will monitor the production of the company, of the manufacturing shoes of the company, every single Monday that is a time series, right? But when I do that collection of data at random times, let's say I once, one day I go on a Monday and I check the manufacturing productivity, and then I go on a Saturday, then one day I go in one month, that is cross-sectional because there's no meaning to it, there's no se sequence to that, there's no time series. Right? So that is a very simple concept. And let's look to the, let's look to the next one. So, and then after that, we're going to go and look into the sources of data. Where do we collect that information from? So, sorry, it was sources of data. I jumped very quickly, but I'm, I'm going to go back. So, the sources of data, that means where do we get the information from? So, first of all, we look to primary data. And what is the primary data? Primary data means I have the money, I have... The time that's a watch <laughs> and I have the resources maybe I have the people yeah that's an that's an employee okay that's an the employee of Cookman University <laughs> collecting the information so that's the primary data when we have all those three things we're gonna collect in our own so I'm gonna go and explore collect the data and then I'm gonna find a whatever I specifically I'm looking for Okay, and then we have secondary data. And secondary data, I don't have any of this. So what I have to do is perhaps look at the internet and I find one information from, let's say, from the government. Uh, they already collected it. I didn't pay for that because the moment that you already pay for that, that becomes already primary data. Okay, so I just receive it. I got it. Well, I can pay for that, but uh, but I mean not to collect it. It's already collected by themselves. So anyways, in this case, we have that information. It's already from a secondary source. I didn't collect it by myself. That is a secondary data. Okay. So now. Now, it is important uh, when we're doing primary data, it is important that we look at two different types of observations. So first of all, observational study means we just observe we don't influence somehow the, the, the things that we're observing. A, uh, and in experimental study, we will do some inputs to see how people react. So let's say, for example, I tell you, okay, so I, I put you down into your exam, your midterm exam, and I just let you perform your exam and see how you do. Right? I just observe you, I check what you're doing, I take my notes, that's observational. But then if I want to do experimental while well, I am doing, well, you're doing your exam, I want to experiment whether changing the temperature of the room could affect your, uh, your score. So I start to raise up the temperature of the room and then I start to see that people start to get very warm, very hot, and then people start to react in a different way. So that's experimental study because I start to uh, change the conditions in order to get the certain information. Okay, so pretty much that is that. Hey, uh, we already talked.
we already talked before about the secondary data right but let's just go a little bit into um, a little bit more detail about it into the secondary data like I said in this case when we have secondary data we are collecting or already somebody collected for us right uh, so that means we don't take the time to do it and perhaps sometimes uh, most of the times we're not going to get exactly what we need because we're relying on the information that they decided to collect it in any method that they decided to collect. Let's see here, for example, if I want to look at the growth in earnings from 2009 to 2020, then the government of the United States already has the information for me, so I'm going to use that information. But if I want to, uh, let's say, for example, here I have the, the compound growth percent of workers and managers, but if I want to say what kind of managers, what kind of industry, then I don't have that information and that is a problem with secondary data that it may have areas that I I don't know and then of course then I will have to research it on my own